Hey guys, Paul from Ashen Phoenix. It's a new comic book day for the week of December 1st, and we're going to get started right now. This episode brought to you by Paul and Tim Do a Thing, because are we really promoting anything else right now? No, that's definitely what we are doing. Check it out. Put a little link up there to grab it. Uh, we're only seven uh, subs away from 500 on that channel, so uh, check it out. Hey guys, Tim from Team Ashen, Capes and Scals, Paul and Tim Do a Thing, the comic book store. Let's talk about some comics. I've got the mighty... Marvel first book collection. This giant massive cube is perfect for getting your younger ones into comics. It's got uh, all kinds of stories. I mean, they list Kirby and Ramita Sr. and Jr. and uh, the Buscemas. And really, it's probably amazing. It's shrink wrapped, so I can't confirm it, but it's got to be great, right? We have Spider Man Worlds Collide. This is the uh, stories where Miles and Peter meet. Uh, Spider-Man 1 through 5, and then the sequel, also done by Bendis, all collected in one big volume. We got Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries. This is uh, issues 1 through 6. Is that still going, Paul? I feel like that's still going beyond that. I think so. We've got Green Lantern Season 2, Volume 1, continuing the Grant Morrison storyline, which is very Space Cop. We've got Truth and Justice. This is, uh, I believe... Collecting chapters 1 through 21 of the popular anthology series. That's what that was. I knew I would word that <laughs> worse than that. We've got uh, the Mighty Masterworks version of Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2. This is collecting issues 11 through 19, as well as Annual 1, which is the Sinister Six introduction. Uh, really cool stuff if you've never read some old Spideys. And finally, Spider-Man and the Authority hardcover. Paul loved this, so it's got to be pretty good, right, Paul? It was pretty good, yeah. Pretty good. First up, we have the Me You Love in the Dark, issue number five. This is the end, and if you can see by the uh, cover, it doesn't go well. Um, this started out as a really sweet book, and then turned into a very clinical check on how bad uh, codependency and controlling um, uh, issues and relationships happen when you... Uh, ignore red flags. Yeah, that's uh, this is way deeper than you expected it to be. And this is just an amazing ending to that story and uh, the realizations of um, of uh, what come out of uh, volatile and controlling relationships like that. Um, but man, this is this is a great ending. I can't wait to review the um, the trade where we can go at least a little bit into um, some of the things that went on in this book, but it is amazing. It, uh, if you can find the other issues, definitely grab this. If not, I mean, Image is really good about getting uh, trades out very quickly, so this should be out probably this month. So definitely grab this and check out the rest of this series because it is amazing. The art is spectacular, and it is a really interesting story. All right, first for me is Wonder Woman Annual 2021. Um... Uh, when I don't know what else to read, I always fall back on Wonder Woman, but it's written by Becky Cloonan, who I absolutely love, so I had to do it. Uh, Co-written, anyways. And this is a story of Wonder Woman going to an exhibit, trying to meet up with a friend constantly, but she's Wonder Woman, so finding the time is hard because something always go wrong. Uh, there is a, I believe, new character who claims to have some ties to Themyscira, and perhaps even was there before her. So if he is to be believed, there's a very interesting setup for a storyline here. This is kind of like an intro to the Trial of the Amazons, which is going to come out soon. Um, I enjoyed this book a bunch. And, you know, kind of just diving in like I do to Wonder Woman every now and again. Um, pretty cool story. You don't have to know a lot to read it. So if you're wanting to get in before that, definitely check it. Check out this issue. Next up, almost my pick of the week. Um, if it wasn't, if there wasn't a number one. Uh, to check out. It is the Human Target issue number two. Um, this is such a good book. The entire time um, I was reading this book, all I could hear is just like a lone saxophone playing off in the distance. And if you know anything about noirs and those like, uh, even the parodies of the noirs where it's like you have a, a detective just kind of sitting in a improperly lit room and then suddenly you hear a saxophone off in the distance as a as a dame comes in and tells you her story and all that stuff that's basically this issue as uh Tran chance is still trying to figure out who 
uh, poisoned him and um, his interactions with Ice. <sighs> this is so well written. Even if you do not care about uh, Christopher Chance, this is such an amazing series, and I cannot wait for the rest of it. It's only two issues in. You should be able to find the first issue. You Do yourself a favor and grab this. Not my pick of the week, but really, really close. All right, next up from me is Animal Castle, issue one from Ablaze. The artwork in this is super sweet. Basically, it's an Animal Farm-style story, uh, if you've read that book. Essentially, what you have is there was a castle, and all the humans died off. The animals don't really remember why. May have been a, a battle, may have been a plague. They don't really care. They own the castle now, and they have essentially created their own society. And everybody's equal, except they're not. And they fall into the same trappings of man, where there's a hierarchy, and people are good, people are bad, and things get bad. Real bad. Uh, the artwork is so good. And the scaling of the animals is great. And just when there's violence, it's pretty violent. Um, I don't think it's going to trigger anybody because, you know, they're supposed to be doing humanoid things and having kind of building. I don't know. It didn't trigger me. But I enjoyed the story. It's pretty dark, though. And uh, you don't have to have, you, you don't need to have uh, read Animal Farm. It certainly would help to give you an idea of the tone they're going for here. Just a weird, crude cool book and, and i dug it so definitely check it out what is my pick of the week it is the last session issue number one this is such a sweet book and very timely um if you are a D, &D player if you play D, D and you know the struggles of getting together every single week um as you are adults and things and how um how hard that can be and uh the friendships that you want to continue to to have uh around your table this is their book it's basically talking about a, a group of friends who um, were waiting in an after-school uh, club and their club president never got never got there. And they're just like, well, maybe we'll start a D&D campaign. And it's like, this should end before like winter break, right? And then four years later, uh, they're out of school and uh, they're scattered all over the place and just can't really find the time to get there and finish this campaign. And finally... Uh, through tons and tons of planning, they get to finally sit down and finish their campaign uh, with an extra character because one of the one of the people is in a relationship, and uh, the wife who everybody seems to really like wants to join in and be part of it. And this is the story of that campaign and the ending uh, of how this is going to go. This is such a sweet book. The art is really really cute. The writing is spectacular. Um, it is definitely something fun that I was not expecting to really love this much. And uh, you should definitely give this a try because it is a lot of fun. Especially if you're a D&D character. If, you're, if you love D&D &D and you know the struggles of, of getting together week, uh, week after week or month after month of whatever your session schedule is, uh, you're really going to feel this book. So definitely grab it. All right, time for my pick of the week. Paul, do you know what my pick of the week is? No. It's King of Spies, issue one. This is a new Mark Millar. I don't know if this ties in directly to Kingsman, but it's got a Kingsman-type vibe. And it is about an aging hitman kind of character who kind of is having a rough go in his later years, and he's just kind of starting to feel bad about some of the awful things he did. And when things go from bad to worse, he kind of is like, well, screw it, I'm old and probably not going to live forever. Why don't I just try to right some of these wrongs? This is a hyper-violent book. Uh, the flashbacks of him in his younger days where he's doing all kinds of bad murdery things are very gruesome. And uh, I guess if you're familiar with the Kingsman books or movies, you're used to this from him. Um, uh, Scalero, Matteo Scalero, is your artist. Always good. Always on point. Um, I guess just be prepared for some, some crazy violence. But the book was great, and I wasn't sure that I was going to like it, but... Once you get about halfway in and there's a couple twists and turns, I was like, oh, this is this is classic Millar. I enjoy this. So as long as you're in for some violence, you should enjoy this book. So definitely check it out. All right, guys. Thank you for checking everything out. Uh, thank you for checking out all our other things that we do, my podcast, Paul's Twitch, and our other YouTube channel, Paul and Tim Do a Thing. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below any books that you read and you enjoyed this week. Uh, 
after you read them, of course. And um, we'll be back here next week, all right?